hello everyone uh, welcome to today's talk uh, introduction to swasthavratta so i'm dr nikhila hiremat uh, post graduate in swasthavratta so in today's discussion uh, we will be understanding what is the meaning of the term swasthavratta and we will differentiate between swastha and swasthya we will try to understand what is swastha what is swasthya and we will also understand how to maintain uh, this status of swasthya so we are already familiar with what is ayurveda and what are uh, what is its aim and uh, yes even the first uh, part of the aim is to have the liberation or uh, free ourselves from all the ignorance and uh, all the uh, problems of our health etc but the, this can be divided into two objectives the first primary objective is to maintain a positive health to have a health which is stable and sometimes because of uh, uh, different uh, interventions or different uh, effects of environment etc we derail from this perspective of health and enter into another uh, state uh, of uh, disease or ill health or sickness and the secondary objective comes in hand at this time wherein we uh, return from that ill health to positive health that is we establish positive health back in a person who has derailed but how do we uh, try to maintain this positive health the first effort we have to do is to maintain this positive health right so let us uh, that is where the uh, science of swastha vritta comes in handy so let us understand what is this swastha vritta the term swastha vritta is made up of two terminologies swastha and vritta the term swastha let us take the first one swastha is again divided uh, into swa and stha the term swa means self we are already familiar with it right we use uh, the term swa in many other terminologies that means self now this self is something which is uh, without any deviations without it is a pure self and stha indicates stability that is to be stable in one's pure state is swastha in simple terms okay and uh, then comes the vritta vritta is something which is continuously done the term uh, the literal meaning of vritta is circle but yes the, it it indicates uh, in a conceptual way that it has to be done in a continuous manner so what has to be repeated continuously we can also call it as aachara or your behavior so the behaviors which lead to establishment of a pure self state is called as swastha vritta so uh, again once again coming back to vritta vritta means aachara right so what are the uh, different aacharas uh, what what do we gain from this aachara what kind of aachara you should follow so to understand this we have a famous saying that aachara ayuhu labate so uh, what is this ayu is your life what kind of life you will get is depending on the aachara so what are the different types of ayus there are sukhayu you are already familiar with this right in the first year you have studied sukhayu dukhayu hitayu ahitayu fine so whatever type of aachara you are doing it will directly have effect with on your life so if you are doing uh, or supplying your activities to sukhayu you will get sukhayu if you are supplying your activities to dukhayu you will get dukhayu so it is in like directly proportionate whatever activities you do are directly proportionate to what kind of ayu you, you get uh, in your life so let us understand a little bit about this aachara first before going into swastha so what are these aacharas uh, these aacharas can be anything from dinacharya rutucharya all these charyas uh ratri charya sadvrutta even um, your manasika charyas uh and your food uh like your cleansing practices what you do to maintain uh health uh in a day to day manner all these 
are considered in achara okay now are you clear about what is achara so if you still have any doubts will you please post it as comments and we'll discuss about them now again coming back to what is swasthavrata very simple definition of swasthavrata i'm not going to take too many definitions we'll take very basic ones which are uh, useful for you to understand the subject matter and uh, also to help you with your uh, uh, syllabus okay but yes there is uh, the science of ayurveda is like a c and uh, you can definitely explore more uh, of definitions and everything if if it, uh, it uh, kind of interests you so a simplest definition is swasthavrattam ahoratrikam achara krama ityarthah so whatever you do in a complete day aho ratri 24 hours is swasthavrata everything you do is coming under swasthavrata it might it may be right or wrong that is secondary fine but whatever activities you are doing are coming under swasthavrata so let us first uh, now go back to the first term swastha okay now we are clear about achara and how achara affects us so what is swastha swastha can be again defined in a very simple and beautiful way by uh, our chakrapani tikakara charaka tikakara srishtu nirvikaratvena avateshtati iti swastha so what is the meaning of this sentence okay and uh, this swastha his quality bhava is called as swasthya that is health fine so uh, let us understand what is the srushtu nirvikaratvena avatishtati this swastha srushtu means definitely there is no doubt at all it is already established and it is very sure certainly nirvikaratvena without any discomforts vikara means Um, discomforts right so nirvikaratvena without any discomfort avatishtati that is stays or the status it is swastha a healthy person fine so uh, then what is swasthya swasthya sorry is health it is a quality of that healthy person so i hope you understand now srishtu nirvikaratvena avatishtati it is swasthha tasy bhavah swasthyam now there is also another definition for this swastha that is utvejak dhatu vaishamya virahita dhatu samyam ityatah that is uh, swastha can also be defined as dhatu samya avastha so what kind of dhatu samya avastha the one very utvejak dhatu vaishamya virahita it is devoid of any uh dhatu vaishamya which is uh, which might derail the dhatu samya avastha now i hope you have understood what is swastha and swasthya now let us see what are the synonyms how it is represented in shastra there are a uh, lot of other synonyms but the ones which are famously used are swasthya arogya patava laghava also anamaya okay so if you come across any of these uh, terminologies you will have to go back to what is the meaning of swastha stability in pure self fine okay now this was swasthya uh, is defined in different ways but the definitions uh, are, are also giving you uh, and Uh, yeah, what do you say insight about the signs and symptoms of swasthya see when we define a disease state we always have how to identify it right so if a person is suffering from jwara say so what are the signs and symptoms of jwara how you can understand what are the signs what are the symptoms how uh, the temperature variation you can understand lowering of appetite the person can tell you that uh, yes i am not feeling hunger so all these signs and symptoms are well defined for any disease state right so in the same way how to understand if a person is healthy or not so uh, this can be understood by different signs and symptoms which are explained in our shastra the first one i would like to take is a conceptual definition by uh, shushruta fine so it is uh, of course you are you must be already familiar with this 
uh, a very fa famous definition which is repeatedly used by uh, everyone around the world right now is this one but it is the most difficult definition actually speaking okay because it is a concept given by shashrut acharya it is not something which is directly understandable so what is this samadoshaha samagnischa samadhatu malakriyaha so what is samadosha sama agni samadhatu sama mala sama kriya mean then comes the prasanna atma indriya manaha swastha ityabhiyate now this is something like a cycle right and it has a karya karana siddhanta as well now the karya is samadosha sama agni sama dhatu sama mala sama kriya this karya will give rise to the second line of prasanna atma indriya manaha and only then a person can be called as swastha so let us understand these terminologies a little bit more now what is sama dosha you are already familiar with the concept of dosha and what are the doshas uh, we have three doshas and uh, uh, but then what is this this state of sama when you learn about doshas uh, you have vruddhi kshaya and sama avastha but then uh, the meaning of sama dosha there is Yeah, the, all the three doshas are in equal state right in equal quantity quality wise but here uh, it doesn't directly reflect on that state but in fact it reflects on your prakriti so whatever is your prakriti accordingly your dosha status is maintained that is what is sama dosha the next one is sama agni sama agni is again it is indicative of your doshic state according to your the digestive system your doshic state the agni is uh, directly proportional like if you are a pitta major person your agni is tikshna if you are kapha major uh, or if you are vata major so accordingly manda vishama and tikshna is what is your sama agni that person's uh, health okay and then sama dhatu dhatu is again uh, an indicative term but yes let us very simply in general term we take it as our tissues or building blocks of our body so even uh, dosha at times can be considered as dhatu but yes the thing is um, it is properly maintained the quality and quantity of the tissues of your body produced are proper now it is again related as well if the doshas are sama then the agni will be accordingly properly working and the products of digestion that is dhatu and mala are properly produced okay so it is not something which we, you can select like yes i have sama dhatu avastha no it is always a continuous process now when all this process is going on properly even the functions of all your organs and your body functions in a way all the kriyas are happening in a proper way okay so all this will give rise to what the next line of the shloka prasanna atma so atma yes uh, everybody gets confused about why the term atma is used but shushruta acharya or dalhana clarifies it as samanaska sharira so why is this term samanaska sharira because manas you remember has also a individual entity you can have uh, manas separately affected uh, and then it affects the sharira but uh, it is so to indicate the importance of the manas state it is the term is given like that the term might have been given like that there might be other explanations as well so yes the term atma doesn't mean the soul here it means samanaska sharira okay there is no conflict here okay then we might also get an idea of uh, prasanna indriya indriya is indriya patutva that is clarity in perception so you are understanding what you are looking at okay uh, your eyes are grasping the thing properly your uh, senses all the senses are working in a clarity manner there are there are no um, what you say pratyaksha badhakara bhavas or anything which are hindering your perception of the things so prasanna indriya then prasanna manaha again the mana is given separately krodadi 
virahita chitta that is your mind is clear unbiased so whatever you see like a researcher's mind you perceive the things as they are fine so that is prasanna manaha so when we say samadosha samagni samadhatu mala and kriyas and everything so we are talking about sharira itself right we are talking about our body then why does acharya specify again sa manaska sharira and then again it gives uh, the terminology of prasanna indriya and prasanna mana because uh, he wants to highlight the importance indriyas are something wherein uh, like you perceive the thing they are input devices for our body so they have been they have to be given more importance than your whole body so to highlight the importance of indriyas the uh, they have been separately mentioned now manas is also like that see your uh, mind can get disturbed because of bodily pain or it can get happy because of bodily pleasure but your mind also has a separate entity existence and you can get disturbed independently of your body even your body might be comfortable and uh, uh, healthy but still your mind can get disturbed right so to indicate that uh, entity of uh, existence of mind separately it has been given as prasanna manaha so this is about uh, the first uh, concept of uh, health or swasthya swastha lakshana now the second one i would like to Uh, charaka acharya mentions this in uh, uh, in the uh, chapter in the context where he is explaining uh, nindita purushas nindita doesn't mean uh, those who are uh, like who should be nindita or who are not proper or nindita is uh, the term given to personalities or body types which are difficult to treat right do not confuse nindita term uh, with uh, personalities and then he states which personality is easy to treat okay so there he explains these this shloka as arogya lakshanas this uh, goes as samamamsa pramanastu samasamhanano naraha drudendriyo vikarana na balena abhibhuyate a very beautiful concept shut pipasa atapasaha shita vyayama sansaha samapatta samajaraha samamamsa chayomataha now let us understand this uh, samamamsa so what is samamamsa here again the quantitative uh, analysis of your tissues comes samamamsa pramana pramana is given okay so whatever uh, the tissues you have according to your prakriti are in proper quantity quantity wise it is proper sama samhanana the nourishment is happening in a proper way through the indriya again he speaks about indriyas the indriyas are very strong and proper uh, there are no uh, what you say deviations from uh, health or indriyas specifically vikarana na balena abhibhuyate it is a very beautiful concept which is uh, introduced here Uh, it states about the immune system of your body so vikara that is any diseases so you don't get affected by the bala of the vikaras okay so easily you don't uh, if everybody uh, see what is the uh, definition of immunity uh, when we say like the people there might be people who get affected by any disease very easily they are very disease prone and there are people who even 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 if they get exposed to a particular condition like a, a virus say for example right now the corona virus but yes we'll not try that uh, but if anybody is exposed unless they are exposed to a bigger dose of that uh, disease they will not get affected okay they have a good immune system then shut pipasa atapa sahaha shut is hunger pipasa thirst atapa is you can consider it as uh, uh, yes a lot of increased heat okay shita vyayama sansaha 
Shita again, extreme cold, not extreme cold. Uh, nobody will be comfortable in extreme cold where maybe there are yogis who are uh, comfortable, but yes, mostly you don't get affected very easily with simple deviations in temperature. You can sustain the temperature and Vyayama Saha, that is uh, you can uh, sustain uh, like Ardha Shakti Bala accordingly, Vyayama with all its rules, you can sustain that. You won't get too much uh, weak or uh, gasp, gasp or breathing by doing uh, simple Vyayama. Okay, then again he comes to your functions of the body. Samapakta. That is the Agni. Pakta is Agni. Our Agni is in proper way. Samajana. When the Agni is fine, uh, the digestion also happens in a proper way. Right? So that is kind of a chain reaction. Now, Samamamsa. Again, he uses the term Samamamsa itself. It is an indicative term. Uh, it is not a Punarutti Dosha. Samamamsa, what is the next term? Chaya. There, in the first, uh, this Samamamsa Pramana. So he is talking about quantity and here uh, he is talking about the production of the tissues. Now the term mamsa, why he is using the term mamsa for indicating dhatus is, uh, mamsa is the tissue which we find in abundance, right, uh, quantitatively. So maybe he is using that term as an indicative of dhatu itself, something which you can perceive. Mamsa we can easily perceive. So, for example, if we are saying obese, obese person, uh, at these two the lakshanas, uh, you see that there is like the mamsa will be uh, moving. Fine. So, maybe in that way to per make it easy to perceive, he might have used the word mamsa. Okay. So, sama mamsa chayo mataha. So, this definition is very simple to understand. You can actually make a questionnaire out of this and you can ask and you can. Uh, get to know uh, the health status of a person, right? So, Shushruta is more of concept and uh, Charaka is, uh, he, the definition, of, this definition of Charaka is more of uh, direct understanding signs and symptoms. There are other definitions in Vimanasthana also, which is very good definition. You can definitely go through that as well. Now, the third definition uh, I would like to take is that of Kashyapa. Why I chose this definition is because it is very similar to that of what the modern people right now are calling as uh, um, physical dimension of health. Okay, physical and uh, mental dimension of health. So it, if you see, there are a lot of similarities. Actually, they could have just taken our definitions okay, instead of going for uh, years of research. So let us dive into this definition. Anabhilasho bhuktasya paripakaha sukhena. Kashyapa gives a very simple, basic definition. He starts from feeling of hunger. Okay, So anna abhilasho. So you have the feeling of hunger to eat. Okay, you feel like, yes, I want to eat the food. Now, when you have the feeling, that means your system is ready to receive the food. Now, your system is ready and you eat the food. So, bhuktasya. So, when you eat the food, how to know the health of your digestive system? Paripakaha sukhenacha. So, the digestion, paripaka, happens without any uh, hindrances whether it is like uneventful you don't feel any pain or uh, any discomfort or anything fine you won't even understand that the digestion process is going on okay so it is that easy anabhilasho bhuktasya paripaka sukhenacha now what happens after digestion the end of the digestion is uh, the signs are like srushta vin mutra vatatvam you get uh, after four hours, say, or depending on your Agni type, whatever it is. So what happens? You get the urge of defecation, urge of urination, and you pass the uh, like flatulence as well. Fine. Srushta Vinmutra Vatatvam. Then when you pass this malas, what happens? You feel very light and you are happy. Okay. Shari Rasyacha Laghavam. Here the term laghava doesn't mean swastha actually, it means lightness. Okay, you feel light. That is why maybe it has been given as a uh, synonym for swastha because it indicates that happy and light feeling, right? Okay, so 
yes, you have been doing this continuously, this process, this cycle of Anabhilasho Bhukta Se Paripaka Sukhena Cha Srishta Vingmo Pravadatvam Sari Rasta Chalaghama. So this cycle is continuously repeating. Then what happens? After a few days, you feel suprasanna indriyatvam. Your indriyas are properly working. You're, you don't need uh, any extra, like your uh, sound, you can hear properly. Your eyes can see properly. Your skin has uh, sensitivity, proper sensitivity and everything. So, suprasanna indriyatvam. Sukha swapna. Swapna is sleep. So, it, it, uh, it indicates the physiology. So everything is happening properly, you have a proper sleep. Okay, you get sleep when you are to get the sleep and you wake up in a proper way. Sukha Swapna Prabhodanam. And yes, this cycle keeps on going for say a couple of days or months. Then what happens? In long duration, right? It is not a short one. So in long duration, you get Bala, Varna, Ayusha, Labhaha. Labham. Okay, so uh, you, your body strength increases, your complexion becomes clear. Varna doesn't mean you become fair or dark or something, but your complexion clears and Ayusha Labha, your life expectancy uh, is good. And Saumanasya Sama Agnita. So it is again Achara Vritta, it is always a Vritta, it is a cycle. So it also leads to your saumanasyata. You feel good. You, you are active. You are fresh. You, you are always ready to do any kind of work. So that is how uh, the health is understood. If you feel always dull or something, yes, it is, that means you are slowly departing from the status of health. So you feel good. Saumanasyam. Sama Agnita. Again, this is a cycle. So when the food is properly digested and it feeds your Agni as well. Okay, the digest the fire is fed through the food, right? So we get uh, the proper agni as well. Agni everywhere, all agnis, all different variations of agnis. So what are these? Vidya, these are vidya arogya lingani. These are the signs of health. And if anything opposite to this is ill health. So this is how you understand the health. Okay, so this is a wonderful definition of health by Kashyapa. Now, I'm sorry, I don't know at what time I started, but yes. Now, we have understood that what is health and how to identify if a person is healthy or not, right? So there are different definitions, okay? And even Nighantus, you will find a lot of definitions. If you are interested, definitely please go ahead and search for different definitions of health by different acharyas. In Charaka itself, you will find a definition in the Vimanasthana. So that will be your homework to try and find which is that definition, okay? Uh, which is that uh, reference wherein the health is maintained. Now, when we know what is health and all those things about ill health and everything, so we should also know how to maintain the health, right? Uh, the acharya should also give us um, explanation about how to maintain the health. So yes, in Chakrapani Tika, uh, we find how to maintain the health. So the first one is Vishuddha Ahara Acharabhya Sadakshiyamana Sharira Poshanena. Okay, so yes, uh, what is the definition of Sharira? Sharira is something which is always uh, like, uh, we are always using the Sharira, right? It is kind of recycling always. So it is always... Uh, in changes, it is undergoing the changes. That is what the definition of Sharira is. So, Sadakshiya Mana Sharira, it is always kind of uh, diminishing. So, but yes, when you are, uh, there is an output, there should be an input. So, what is the input? Input is always uh, food or activities what you do. Okay, even mental input or physical input or uh, emotional input, all these inputs if you take. So what kind of input do you, uh, you should go for? You should go for Vishuddha Ahara Achara. Okay, Vishuddha, Vishesha Shuddha, that is uh, very clean. What is proper for your prakriti? What is proper for your personality? That kind of Ahara and Achara you should supplement for your body. It is a responsibility. Health is a responsibility in a way. So you should be responsible for your sharira. 
So that is what is going on right now, right? So suddenly everybody has uh, this, uh, because of this COVID situation, everybody has awakened and uh, they, they are understanding the importance of this Vishuddha Ahara and Achara. That is what will give you a long-term immunity, long-term health status. So you have to do the nourishment of your Sharira in a proper way. Like how you take care of your pets or the kids around you or your parents uh, and how you respect your gurus, your signs. In the same way, you have to learn to respect your body as well. Okay. Then, but that is not the only thing which might cause ill health, right? So those are something which are intrinsic factors uh, which you can control. But there are factors which you can't control as well, like the uh, which are external, like this virus right now, which is coming, or environmental changes, the global warming and everything. So which are not directly controlled by you. Okay, yes, indirectly you are responsible. We all are responsible, but. Uh, we are not, we cannot control them directly. So those are the Pratyavaya Hetu. So Pratyavaya Hetu should be uh, tackled. The Parihara should be done. Now, what is the example given by Acharya? The uh, Chakrapani uh, gives the example of lamp. So what is a lamp? Lamp is a Deepa, right? So this Deepa has to be supplied with the proper oil, good quality oil and a whip. So this wick, when you light it, it will burn in a proper way. So this is something which is intrinsic. Okay. So that is what the first line stands for, Nija Hetu. Now, Pratyavaya Hetu is something like wind or the insects coming. So we protect it with a glass or we cover it around so that it is getting the supply of oxygen to burn properly. But it is also not disturbed by uh, the external forces. So this is how we should maintain our health. Okay, so I hope you have understood this, how to maintain the health. So uh, let us uh, end this, uh, this here. Uh, uh, now let us just revise in a short way. So what did we learn today? We understood what is Swastha and Vritta. We understood different uh, signs and symptoms of Swastha, how the acharyas, acharyas uh, uh, identify, what, what are the directions uh, of acharyas uh, to maintain our health, right? So this is uh, what we have discussed today. So in the uh, next coming classes, we'll try to understand what are the, uh, why we should go ahead with maintenance of this, okay? What is the importance of Swastha Vritta? Why we should study Swastha Vritta? Okay, so we can just study something uh, which is like uh, taking care of health and uh, recovery from health and everything. So, but what is the importance of Swastha Vritta? Why Acharyas have given primary importance for this? Why did they uh, make it such an important big thing about Swastha Vritta? And yes, in, uh, the, in today's light, uh, today's situation, um, this is what you can... Um, take home right now right you, you can give someone uh, advice on health how to maintain health that is what counts more than something uh, wherein you are our, our devoid of health and then you establish back okay cure prevention is always better than cure so let us understand this in the next class i hope you have enjoyed this uh, class mm, so let us meet uh, in next week uh, at uh, at a proper convenient time and discuss about the next topics of the uh, class. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you have enjoyed the uh, class, the discussion. Please post your or send me your uh, doubts. And yes, your homework, of course, is to find the other definition or uh, where Charaka Vimanasthana, where it, uh, Arogya Lakshanas are mentioned. Okay. And find, try to find uh, collect the other definitions of health in Nighantukaras as well. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Thank you, ma'am.